Welcome to another video. Today we have two very, very interesting videos. So without further ado, guys, let's get straight into the video. Do you guys think I should believe him? Supposedly he went to the freaking um, <laughs> junkyard five hours ago. No, I was in the puto junkyard, dude. I called him. I called his friend because he doesn't have a fuck. He never. I told him Facetime me. He never Facetime me. Does he, this look the face like he went to a junkyard? No shit, look at my hands. Look at my hands. <laughs> They're hella dirty. Dude, you could have told them. You could have told them stop at the fields y embarrate las putas manos de tierra. Ay, sí, esto no es tierra, esto es grasa, it's, it's grease. I'm a sucker for drama. If she cares enough to care, she's a keeper. And just like the Booty Blaster 3000, blast the like button, leave a comment because it really helps us out in the algorithm. And let's get straight back to the video. I'm tired. I need a break. I'm I'm exhausted. I'm not feeling it today. I'm mm. not I'm not doing it. I'm not gonna do it today. Actually, no, I won't because I'm too anxious and I'm too sad and I'll still be alone. My heart is broken. Why are they always constantly in their cars? I don't get that. Film yourself outside to do something else. It's always in the car. I'm tired. I'm bored. I'm angry at him. I don't wanna do this anymore. I'm gonna leave him. Today we are going to review this strong, independent woman mm. who left her husband thinking that she could do better, then start to cry for sympathy <laughs> on the internet when reality hits hard. You may have heard it said that women need to feel seen, heard, and cherished mm. in relationships. And when they're not, they- Not only women, men as well. I was reminded recently as to why I made my exit in a particular relationship. I was with this person and we were in the same space and we had to do a thing. And I said, I'm going to get ready for the day hmm. and then I'm going to go for a walk. And then when I come back, we can go do the thing. I washed my face. I got dressed. I put my earrings in. I put my face on. You know, I looked fresh and I came out from around the corner and I put my bag back down. I put my pajamas in a different bag. The whole thing and I said I'm ready now I'm gonna go for a walk I'll be back in about an hour I came back after an hour when he was still in bed it's fine there's time and I said do you want to get ready and then we'll go and he said well don't you want to get ready that is maybe the dumbest reason to leave a person. <laughs> Come on, he said something about your appearance and you're... You're gonna leave him because of that? When I tell you the wound he hit and the triggering, I wasn't prepared for that. It probably seemed insignificant to that person. Mm. But to me, it reminded me. It's not that it seemed, it's that it is. There are kids that are dying out there. There's wars. Even the whole thing with like what? Ukraine and Russia. Then you have Palestine, Israel. You have all of this happening, right? And she's complaining over the fact that her husband was commenting on her looks. It's like, what? Do you know anything about that? What can you report at this stage? If you are not in a position to do so safely, yes. then please get to safety. No, it's okay. Um, this is a missile attack on, on Palestine Tower. You will never find someone who will appreciate you exactly the way you want to be appreciated based on your feelings. The world doesn't revolve around you. Your husband couldn't have also be going through some personal problems. Mm. And maybe that's why he was not paying attention to you in that particular moment. Mm. This is the problem with the modern woman's mentality. She thinks that she is so special to the point that her husband is obliged to keep an eye on her 24 seven. Well, life started to humble this woman very quickly after she decided to leave her husband. I'm tired. I need a break. I need a break from <laughs> this adulting out here. I need a break from all of this transition oh. in here. I don't want to talk to people. Look at my eyes. I've seen men which are in relationships like this. And we never ask 
the men like how are you doing it's almost like the brain just after a while when she nags at you that much you're just like yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah so we met in our early 20s we got married at 27 we did not have the connection and the chemistry in like the bedroom and i married the nice guy and he married the hot girl but after 14 years together 12 years married that lack of chemistry and connection became a huge hole in our marriage. Our marriage had run its course and we had our kids together and that's awesome. And he's happily remarried and that's great. And I'm happy for him. <sighs> Always just trying to keep it real, but, and I'm not the lady who cries on TikTok, but sometimes being a single mom is hard because you don't have anybody else to rely on except for yourself. And so my hot water heater went out and um, I now have to miss my youngest son's flag football game, which I only get to go to every other week because I work on the weeks that I, with the weekends that I don't have them. And now I have to miss it because I have to stay home for a damn hot water heater to be installed. And it's just super frustrating at times because I'm the only adult in the house. And so now I have to leave him and go do that. And it's just Sometimes it's just hard to not have anybody to rely on. It just goes to say, if you're not her first option, you're gonna be her last. You come in here talking critically about men. Do you want one? Do you want a man? If you want a man, become more desirable to men. If you don't want a man, you don't gotta do nothing to be, be more desirable to men. You don't even want a fucking man. But if you do want a man and you're not willing to adjust yourself to be more desirable to men, you're fucking delusional. You're the problem. Her life became so miserable to the point that she started to find ways to rationalize why her own friends started to distance themselves from her. Did you ever hear that phrase that people are seasonal? It's true. And it happens with romantic relationships. It happens with friendships. Why are there so many women today who say they don't need a man? I mean, because if, if they want to go 50-50 on things, I just don't need them. Because there's a lot of bum-ass men out in the world who don't do enough so us women can supply for ourselves now. There are two types of people, right? There are the people which give you energy and the people which take energy from you, right? I'm a person which gives a lot of energy. If I'm hanging out with people, I want people to have a good time. I want them to, you know, be laughing and be in like the best mood, right? But then I've noticed there are people like her, which are constantly just sucking. You know, it's like that scene from Harry Potter when they're like, it's the Dementors just coming and then like just sucking the, the soul out of you. And I'm just like, Whew. You have been honestly too loud. You moved in here a week ago and you think you can just have loud parties. You're, you're waking up the entire neighborhood and you're pissing out here on the street. When I take my recycling out, all I, all I smell is piss. And now I know it's your piss. There's kids that live in this neighborhood and they're trying to sleep. You think they can sleep with this racket? I don't want to keep smelling your piss. Do you pay the rent here? And to sum that up, you just gotta lay in the bed that you made. Roll the next clip. I've had sex with 35 guys. I'm cutting you off right now. Okay. <laughs> Whew. Oh Lord. <laughs> Impressive isn't Whew. the word. She yeah. know. So if I'm judged for Anybody having- Anybody else need a shot of this? If I'm judged for having great taste. We are in the bar, so help yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we got this for the next hour. I got a dating story for you, haven't I? I got a dating story for you, haven't I? I like the accent. A disaster date, may I say? Ooh. Let me set the tone of this date. So I was somewhere, I saw this guy, kept looking at me, and I thought, you are rather delicious. You are... You are rather delicious, scrumptious. I gotta have you for dinner. A beautiful specimen of a man. I'm gonna be a strong woman. And I'm going to give you my number if I see you again. This is a Chad, guys. Only the Chads, only the Brads gets the number directly. I did see him in there again. So I wrote my number down and I walked past and I gave him my number. <gasps> Absolute panic in my heart, but I did it and I felt excellent. So really, the first red flag should have been... 
I like that. I like that she is so persistent. Usually it's the guy which approaches. That's that's an applaud to you. Good. The fact that I didn't hear from him for a week and the text was that he found my number in his pocket. But that's not a bad thing. If he didn't text you a week, it's not a bad thing. You should not be on girls. Give it time. Don't be don't be that guy which is always stressed and trying to text her and always nod. Nah, give it time. Let it marinate. When he was uh, putting his jeans on. He was putting his jeans on. I was a bit like, uh, sorry, I'm like a golden ticket. Why have you forgotten about my number? Thank you very much. Maybe it's because you ain't a golden ticket. Have you thought about that? Anyway, I let it slide and I thought, right, let's go on the date. He said, do you want to go for a drink? I said, cool. I don't drink. I've been sober for quite a long time. And I didn't feel the need to tell him this because I still like going to a bar. I just didn't feel like it was something that I necessarily needed to say over text. Um, so I turned up to the bar and he was like, do you want a drink? And I said, I have a soda and lime. He seemed quite offended by this and was like, well, what, do you not drink? And I said, oh, no, and like explained. And he was like, oh, I thought, I thought we were going to have a drink. And I was like, you can drink, like, it's all good. He said quite a few times, like, I really wish you were drinking. And I was kind of like, all right, calm down. I don't think you really want to see me drunk, but anywho. I don't think that you should pressure a girl to do anything. Give her the option, and if she wants to, she drinks. If she doesn't want to, that's a good thing. It's a good sign that she's not drinking. After a couple of drinks, his flatmate called and asked where he was, and he said he was at the pub with me. So then he said, can we go back to mine? I don't want to drink drive. My flatmate's there, um, and we can just sit and chill. And I kind of thought, yeah, all right, I'm having a nice time. Let's do this. So I went back to his. Well, this is where it gets saucy. On the drive back, he stops, and his dealer gets into the back of the car uh, and he picks up a substance which listen. a lot of Okay, so he got the white gold. That's crazy to do that on a date. And you, can you really trust this girl? Uh, I, I would not recommend that, but hey, it is what it is. That was a great dating story, to be honest. Uh, I think if it wasn't for the drugs, he would have pulled her easily. And if he were to stop with the drugs and go all clean, I think he can pull her again. But anyway, guys, like, comment, and share, and tell me, guys, what you think in the comment section. Have you ever been on some crazy dates and done some crazy things? Leave it in the comment section, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.